This is the Television Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Sect. Episode 14, recorded May 7, 2015. And welcome to the TV Enthusiast Podcast, The Weekly Set. I am your host, Tyson. Joining me today are Lee. Hi. Kat. Hi. And Will. Hello. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, we're just going to be playing a little bit of a game, talking about what kind of shows we'd like to see come back and kind of discussing how that would work. Uh, it's, it's just purely, you know, theoretical nothing no meaning to it really it's just kind of a game but i thought it would be kind of a fun little lively conversation so that's what we're going to be doing um before that though i just wanted to kind of touch base on some of the news that has been going on um a lot of shows uh canceled a lot of shows renewed so let's kind of go over some of that briefly um agents of shield uh and you said agent carter will both picked yep. up for new both seasons picked up for new seasons uh agent I'm so happy. Yes. Agent Carter was actually the surprise because a lot of people were, that was the one that was on the bubble. Shield was, that was always a lock, I think. Yeah. We knew that was coming back, but Agent Carter was a pleasant surprise. Although now I'm hearing now that the uh, Shield spinoff that was rumored is a, has actually been killed. I, yeah, I saw that too. I'm personally yeah. actually kind of okay with it because they were going to be taking away two characters from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that I actually like. On Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., like, specifically in that context, so... Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I don't think doing a spinoff of S.H.I.E.L.D., taking characters out of S.H.I.E.L.D., and possibly creative as well, is such a good idea. I mean, that... That's that's the risk of the spinoff, you know, is that yeah. you ruin your original property. Yeah. I would rather have them develop a new show in the Marvel Universe like they did with Agent Carter. And it seems like that's still... Is that still in development? The other uh, Marvel project? From a um, the twelve years a slave writer. Don't know because they renewed his show American Crime as well. Hmm. And so who knows? That could be far off knows? though. I mean, yeah, that, that's that was just kind of a vague rumor. Yeah, that was kind of a vague rumor. So on the DC side, uh, we got uh series pickups for both the uh the Flash Arrow crossover series as well as Supergirl. Yeah, uh, both been officially picked up. Legends of Tomorrow, yeah. which is the official <laughs> title. <laughs> Legends of Tomorrow, which sounds either very DC or very Disney. One, yeah. one or the other. <laughs> it's a very DC. Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually looking forward to that. Um, I really want to see it. The opening credit thing or something, it should just have like an old timey like radio voice going, Legends of Tomorrow! tomorrow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it sounds like completely crazy in like all the right ways. I think, I think that'll be like a fun little sandbox for like their little DC universe that they've built up in those shows. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's going to involve time travel, it's going to involve all kinds of things, and it's clear, and they're just throwing random characters together, so. <laughs> it sounds like they're going for the completely non-grounded approach, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I'd want in a series like that, is for them to just, just screw the grounding, you know, just no grounding, just, just straight go for no it. No grounding, you know? I mean, you're. We got we got a team comprised of a ti uh being led by a time traveler comprised of like the Atom and then Captain Cold and then a woman who is dead. Uh <laughs> Yeah. This sh this should be like a no holds barred series like a, a, I'm like a Doctor for Who for America. <laughs> <laughs> well, just like every episode could to. just be anything. Um is in that when the CW released their whole superhero fight club promo thing for Arrow Flash a few weeks ago, and um, yeah. the Adam shows up at the very end, I was like, I like his character more in those 10 seconds than I have in the entire season of Arrow, so I'm thinking I'm going to like him a lot more once he's away from Felicity, so I yeah. think, I think uh, Brandon Routh is really endearing in the role, so I think that's going to be fun to see. Right. I right. just watched Flash and Arrow tonight, like the this week's episodes. Man, Felicity is such a buzzkill now. She's She's Felicity just bringing down the show, man. It's just at actively ruining the show now. Yeah, seriously. Uh, her moralizing and it's just getting out of control. It's getting way out of control. And also they're making it so she's like in every scene in every episode now. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And it, it's as if 
suddenly she's like the source of all like moral wisdom or something and it's like really felicity can somehow now take on league of assassins like bad yeah. guys <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <ridiculous>. <laughs> i think yeah, this is what? the downside to her popularity is that i it feels yeah. like the writers are just like trying overly to cater to her fans because they're so intense and so outspoken um my, right. I, I don't know yeah, if that's I what it feels express like. this here, but my biggest frustration with Felicity this season is that she's now essentially just become um, the love interest to not one, not two, but three different superheroes, which is like the most common use of a female character in comic books, or at least in comic <laughs> book adaptations, as opposed to Laurel, who actually gets to be a superhero. Like, there's no doubt in my right. mind between those two characters who's getting the better storyline. Yeah, it's pretty painful to watch right now. Laurel has actually been handled a lot better in this season than in previous seasons, in fact. She's actually, I feel like Laurel is actually growing as a character, whereas I don't think Felicity has any kind of growth arc happening. Oh, she mm. definitely doesn't. She definitely yeah. doesn't. Have you heard of the um, character trope, the Rita? Which is, uh, it comes from Dexter. There was a character in Dexter named Rita who kind of everybody in the audience hated because she was like the buzzkill and that was kind of her role. And there have been other shows that have done it similarly. Breaking Bad had Skylar, for example. She was the Rita. <laughs> and it's always Bad. the woman, isn't it? Yes, it's always disturbing. a woman, and, but it's always like the, the role is always the person that's like moralizing the people that are in a morally subjective field. <laughs> so like you have like these people that, and you just want to see them, the story progress. And in order for the story to progress, they have to do these things that are like morally questionable. And then this is the one person that just kind of brings that all down. Like you can't do that, you know? And, it's like Felicity has just turned into a Rita now. And <laughs> it sucks. It's horrible. It's like sometimes a Rita makes sense. I think like in something like Breaking Bad, having Skylar be a Rita made sense. It worked with the show and they kind of gave her a leg to stand on. And they went to a certain point in the series where they kind of showed you like, oh, wait, she was right, you know? Yeah. In, in the position and that worked. But for doing something like a, a vigilante type, you know, superhero series and having a, a Rita in it, it just, it sucks. <laughs> it doesn't work. One of the things I think really hurt is like they're try, trying to like have like a, this relationship between Oliver and Felicity. And I don't think there's any chemistry there whatsoever. Yeah. I there agree. never was. And that's the same problem on The Flash now. They're really pushing on this whole Iris Barry thing. <laughs> and they're really trying to push the prominence of Iris as a character. And it's very unearned, you know? Like, it, it, it just makes her character seem forced. And I just right. don't like it. I know Iris. I, I mean, I know Iris is supposed to be the love interest. She's the love interest in the original comic books. I mean, but it's I get like we're that. told she's the love interest instead of showing it, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think my biggest frustration, or one of my frustrations with both of those, is that one of the things I loved about Arrow right off the bat is the show has a ton of archetypes that you see so much across all so much of other comic book TV and films, but it uses all of them in really original and interesting ways. But when it comes <laughs> to Oliver and Felicity and Barry and Iris, it's not like it's very, very, it's, it's falling back on just generic use of those archetypes. Smallville. Again. Yeah. Right. Back to small. Yeah. Clark Kent and Lana Lang. Like it's it's and, just falling. And meta humans, yeah, and meta humans have become the new uh meteor freaks, which <laughs> goes all along with it. It's yeah. just ridiculous. But yeah. Let's move on from that. Um I'm very happy that uh uh iZombie was renewed for a second season. I've so, been adoring. I was very that. happy to see that. Yeah. <laughs> well um very well earned, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited about that. Um, the, geez, the last episode was so great. It seems like the CW has been knocking it out of the park lately with these shows. I mean, they've just been doing a good job, like yeah. getting these shows on the air, making sure they're good and it's paying off for them. Yeah. So a, a big, a big cancellation. I know this is my, my sister's going to, you know, dread hearing about this. I sent her a message. I haven't heard back from her, but. She's probably already upset and hearing it is that the Mindy project was canceled. 
Do any of you watch the Mindy Project? Yeah, I do. <laughs> no. Oh, uh, Lee, I'm Aww. sorry. Sorry, Lee. I know that show has a big fan base and it's really popular. It's something I never quite got into, but I recognize that it's like a um it's pretty young to be canceled for a comedy like this. See oh, I'm, I'm sitting here like all smug thinking, hey hey, nothing I care about has been canceled. <laughs> and I'm <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, that sucks, Lee. Yeah. Sorry about that. That's that was a, a bad cancellation. I know a lot of people are gonna be kind of upset about that. I know Ed liked the Mindy Project as well, if I remember correctly, so... Yeah, he told me he... I asked him if he watched it, and he told me that he actually advocated the show um, on the podcast. Yeah, yeah, he mentioned it as as being something really good, so... It's it's kind of a shame, you know? It's like, it doesn't affect me personally, but, like, I know my sister was really into it. And from what I've kind of heard about it, it's not like it's a show that's, like, lost its legs. It's not like how The Office went on too long. Or, you know, or like New Girl's gone on way too long now. It's one of those shows that was still kind of, you know, still hitting good ground with its run. Right, so. right. So I can understand, you know, fans are going to be kind of upset about that. So, Lee, you could bring up, uh, for our topic, you could bring up the Mindy Project. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. Let's reboot the Mindy Project. So, are there any other kind of big cancellations or renewals that you guys uh, took note of? Not that I can think of. No, that's the big one for me was iZombie that I was happy about, and the biggest kind of sh- shocker for me was Mindy Project. Even though I don't watch it, I kind of saw that as like a surprise. You know, I didn't, I didn't expect it. I think everything that has been canceled. I kind of expected to be canceled. There were a couple surprises in the renewals. I mean. Gallivant got renewed. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Agent Carter, I was also unsure if that was the big surprise for me. That was the big pleasant surprise That's was a Agent surprise Carter. surprise as well, yeah. Yeah. Because I was too. not very sure that was coming back, especially with these rumors of like a S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff and stuff. It's like, where are they going to find room on a schedule for all these Marvel shows? Yeah. So definitely happy about that. So let's, uh, um, that's kind of the big kind of news that's been going on. It's kind of the early upfronts right now. So we're just kind of getting cancellation and renewals and pilot pickup news. That's pretty much it. So you're, you're probably going to be getting more of that through the next week as well. Um, let's talk about kind of what we've been watching just briefly though. We already kind of talked a little bit about Flash and Arrow. So I think we can kind of skip over that for now, but. Um, what have you guys been watching? Lee, what have you been watching this week? Um, I started watching a little bit of Louie, and it was really good. I'm, I was really surprised. Like, there's a great balance between, like, comedy and just, like, really beautiful, um, like, relationships and, and, and humor and just really beautiful, like, weird moments. It is very dreamlike. He does go from, like, sequence to sequence, and all the characters yeah. don't have, like, they don't have to make sense. Like, the mother is black, I believe. So, yeah. and the children are white and he's white. But I love, I love that. I love that he's sort of breaking, um, the rules of like what a, what a character can be. And that even if you're like, you can play anybody so long as like you can play it convincing enough. I, I love that. It was just so cool. And it was re- really refreshing, like really, really refreshing to watch Louie. Um, it's very, it's very him. It's very his style, but it's also very like, beautiful i don't i don't know how to explain it <laughs> it's very avant-garde it's very new and it's the way it presents things and i think um one of the things i like about it is that a story can go on for like a two minute sequence and then it's just on to the next thing as you know it's almost like a separate episode but it's in the same episode True. or a story can go on for like six episodes <laughs> it, it, it's like it, it can go all over the place so it, it kind of just jumps like it doesn't like so you never feel like, oh, they really inflated this story out and pushed it too big. Because if it's a short story, it'll it'll wrap up in two minutes and then go on to something else, which is, uh, I think, is kind of refreshing. I love that, too. Like, yeah, he does really, he concludes every story. He doesn't, you're right, there's, like, no inflation in the uh, in the story. Like, a scene is a scene, and then it's done. Like, it's, you don't have, like, you don't think about it again. Or you don't go visit it again, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a great show. Um Cat Will have either of you watched Louie? Uh, no, no I just a clip here or there. Yeah, it's it's a really good show. So have you been watching anything else? Uh just Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that. 
Um, just to, to any, uh, listeners out there, if, if you also, um, watch our, uh, Game of Thrones videos that Will and I put out where we discuss kind of the events of the episodes, this last week we didn't get one up. We actually recorded it. None of my audio came out at all. None of it. And since I was hosting it, I could have published it, but it would have made no sense. It would have sounded like Will was insane. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so that's, uh, uh, that didn't happen. So in next week for, um, on Monday, I believe it'll probably go up on Tuesday though. Um, when we record it, we're going to be talking about that episode again. So last week's episode, as well as the next week's episode. Um, so yeah, Game of Thrones been pretty good. Finally kind of starting to pick up steam a little bit. Um, stuff is kind of going a little bit slow on that. So, but we'll kind of leave most of the talk on that for um that separate series since we have it <laughs> all right um anything else cat what have you been watching um right now let's see i finished out gotham for good or ill <laughs> uh and of course agents of shields um which is completely fantastic these days um, those are my two big ones. Um, I'm still a few episodes behind on Arrow and Flash, but I'm rapidly catching up so that I can watch both of those season finales. Are you, you caught up on S.H.I.E.L.D.? Yeah, I'm all caught up on S.H.I.E.L.D. Like, the, and I love S.H.I.E.L.D. These last few episodes of S.H.I.E.L.D. have been, I, it's, I think it's one of the best in the genre right now. I'm kind of impressed that they bookended Avengers. Like, I knew that they were setting up stuff before, but to directly go like the next week already talking about kind of the events afterwards. Sure. It's, I was kind of worried they wouldn't, that they'd be trying to kind of give some space. That's actually kind of annoying because like, what if you're watching S.H.I.E.L.D. and you didn't like rush out to watch the new movie, you know, you're, you're like, screwed. I know, <laughs> right? I think, I, I totally get that, but at the same time, I understand what they're trying to accomplish. They did the exact same thing with Winter Soldier. I think it's a cool idea just because of the way it ties both of these two properties into the same universe. And if you can't do it, um, bookending it around the U.S. release of the movie, then when can you, you know? Otherwise, what, uh, when is the point when you can say, okay, this is where the amount of people have. And I think yeah, there's that's also true, a fair, because... uh, there's uh, also a, it's not unreasonable, like, there is no way that there are people watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. that aren't, like, <laughs> fans of the MCU. So I would, I would be shocked not. if anything less than 90% of the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. audience weren't the kind of people who went and saw Age of Ultron on opening night. Right. So I I think that's, it's a, I get what you're, where you're coming from, Will, but I, I think it's also a fair assumption for Marvel to make. Right. A couple months ago, I would have disputed that. Um, because my sister actually was watching Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and doesn't watch the MCU stuff except for, like, Agent Carter and, I, and she's seen, like, the first Captain America and that's pretty much it. Uh-huh. Uh, but she stopped watching it because, you know, it, <laughs> it's just as it started getting more into the actual MCU stuff, she started losing more interest uh, in it. So. That's kind of too bad. So, but that, that, that happened before. So, like I said, I would have disputed it before because I knew an exact example, but, she stopped watching, so I can't speed it now. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, um, I was, I was happy the way they handled the Avenger stuff, cause I was worried it would overtake it. And as I'm sure I've expressed in the past, that's something in retrospect that's kind of frustrated me about Winter Soldier is the show kind of necessitated Winter Soldier to get going. And it's like, right. that's kind of a problem when you need an exterior element to grow into yourself. Whereas um, Avengers was kind of like this quick little drop in, drop out, and then the show was able to get back to what it's been building towards all season. They had like a little, a cute little interview with uh, Joss Whedon recently where they were talking about like Agent Coulson and stuff and why he's not in the movies now that he's alive. And he said something to the effect, well, as far as the Avengers are concerned, he's still dead. Um, and he, he also said, uh, he also said, you know, these things, he said, he says, these things happen. I think I pissed off Marvel. Because, you know, I, I made a show about S.H.I.E.L.D. and then a few months later they destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. in a movie. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's like, whoops. So we'll talk more about MCU related stuff, um, tomorrow in a, in a video thing we're doing. I don't want to kind of dwell too much on that because we'll, we won't stop. 
<laughs> no. no, yeah, I know. We, we once we get on this topic, we can't get off of it. So. It's dangerous. <laughs> so, so let's move on. Um, I've been watching uh, um some of the new anime season. Uh, Will Lee, have you been watching any of the new anime season? Um, I have not. Lee, no. <laughs> so I think the one I I do, I'll just bring up one real quick. Um, just because I like it when an anime kind of surprises me when I go in with like almost no expectations and end up loving it. And the one for me this season so far has been Food Wars, which is about a uh a guy. He he's a a boy. He's um going into like a uh, high school or something, I think. And his his dad's a cook, and he and his dad have like a restaurant. They're both like great cooks. His dad's like way better than he is though. And then suddenly his dad just basically abandons him and starts going off around the country and enrolls his son into this uh, um school that's like this insane culinary school that's just massive it's almost like the hogwarts of cooking or something <laughs> and it's just it, it's all about food the whole thing but it's a hilarious show and it's like over the top epic they get into these confrontations and the people tasting the food it's like orgasmic to them they like have straight up hallucinations <laughs> when they when they taste the food and it, it's really funny um and yeah, it, it's just really hooked me in, um, and I didn't expect much from it. So I just wanted to kind of bring that up as an option to anybody kind of watching the new anime season. Check out Food Wars. It's on Crunchyroll. Now it's on Hulu as well, I believe. So you can check that out. Well, let's move on to the main topic then. The main topic of tonight's show is the kind of idea of uh, reviving a show or bringing a show back and kind of what we do. I figured I'd start it off just to kind of, you know, get you guys rolling so you can guys kind of know what I'm going with here. I actually brought a prop here. Uh, the people listening to the podcast aren't going to be able to see it because there's no video on the podcast, but just so my fellow podcasters can see it. I was a huge fan of Highlander when it was on TV. Did any of you guys watch the Highlander TV series? No. Yes. My <laughs> mom was like a huge fan of that. So I, I'm going to show you how much of an absolute geek I was for Highlander, which is, ah, uh, the Highlander sword. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah, I, I'm su such a Highlander geek that I actually bought the Highlander sword because I needed to have it because I was so into Highlander at the time. Highlander for me turned out to be one of those kind of weird shows that I absolutely adore it. I look back on it and I don't have any, it's not like I regret loving it. It's not one of those shows that I'm like ashamed of looking back or any. It wasn't a terrible show. It was pretty no, decent. No, it, it was a good show, but it's, it's almost like I forgot about it. Like I knew about it, but I forgot about it because, you know, like we're something like Buffy and Angel. It's kind of stayed in the cultural zeitgeist, even though it's long gone. Um, because so many other shows reference it and work with it and so many other people reference it. And Highlander just kind of seemed to disappear off the face of the earth yeah, for a while. Yeah, it's, it's been forgotten. It's like nobody yeah. references it or talks about it. It wasn't, it just didn't hit the cultural zeitgeist. I mean, when people talk about Highlander, they refer to the movies that came well, out. The, the show had a lot of fans too, so that's still there. It's just that the, um, it didn't like, it didn't really last much longer than the show itself. Like once the show is, I, a lot of people liked it and, and thought it was really good. It's just that it didn't stay in the topic of conversation. Like, um, you know, like something like Buffy or Angel did. Right. Um, from like a similar kind of time. But, um, the one thing I'll, I'll say though, is that I've been seeing some recent shows that have really been making me think about Highlander again. Like it just kind of reminded me, it's like, oh yeah, I used to be that age and there was a show I watched, you know, it's like flashbacks have been kind of hitting me, um, because of some recent shows I've been watching. One of which is Outlander, which is a show that takes place in Scotland in like the, I think, 1600s or something. That's the and one that's the so title. Run more, right? Yes. Um, and so just the name being similar and, and the fact the Scottish setting and stuff kind of reminds me of it. Um, but in addition to that, there's a show that's, it's an okay show on ABC this, uh, season called Forever that's about an immortal. And it's very similar. Like, you can tell that they're straight up basically trying to make their own kind of version of Highlander. It's like Highlander without the fighting. What? Like, there's no... 
There's no <laughs> cutting off heads and stuff. There's just some immortals going around and they're having flashbacks of these different times in their lives and they're trying to... It's that, that aspect of Highlander of trying to fit in into the modern times even though you're an immortal kind of right. aspect. That's kind of what Forever is. And so seeing both of those on this season has really made me think about Highlander and started to think, you know, a Highlander would be really good if they brought it back now with kind of the modern standards of a more sophisticated audience and and not having to kind of placate to anything. And, you know, just kind of the way the medium has evolved, I think, really like carved out a space for like a really good return for something like Highlander. Um, Yeah, I would agree that premise has a lot of potential for great storytelling. I mean, you could do a lot with the Highlander premise. Um, so you definitely could make a n- good modern series out of that. So, Lee, Kat, you, you didn't watch Highlander, but do you do you kind of know the general about what the show's about? Oh, sure. Isn't that Highlander? There can only be one. Yes. Okay, yeah. I've, I've Lee? I'm, I'm looking it up right now because I've never heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Highlander was originally a movie in the 80s. Um... And it, it's basically about immortals, and the immortals fight each other. You can kill an immortal only by cutting off their head. And when you do, you basically gain all of their power if you're another immortal. So these immortals are kind of going around, and in the original movie, you kind of see this guy, and he's like in modern, like, New York at the time. And then you see flashbacks of when he was, like, in Scotland, you know, in, like, the like 1500s or something and you see like these kind of all these kind of different events throughout his immortal life that kind of shape who he is and as he's dealing with this guy that's basically hunting him because there can be only one is what they all say is there's in the end there's only one immortal left and that one immortal that's left is going to have like all of the power and knowledge of all these basically is going to be like godlike in the end um <laughs> sounds crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> Don't watch any of the movies based on the series. Those are horrible. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, the first, yeah. So here's the thing is the first movie was really good. The second movie was like the biggest abomination to any franchise I've ever even heard of. They just completely wrecked it. I mean yeah. they they added like aliens and just it just went off. It was like the biggest, like, uh, um, yeah, shark jump I've ever seen <laughs> on anything. It's so ridiculous. It's horrible. Um, okay. <laughs> then, like, the third movie kind of went a little bit more grounded, but was still a bit off. And then, um, then the, the series started and the series kind of really took a more grounded approach. Um, even more so than the first movie. And I think that's what made it work for me so much is that. They really kind of focused in on somebody's life, like living this life and like the idea that like, you know, if they die publicly, they have to pick up and leave. You know, they have to like they they have to sneak out basically of that country and restart their life under a different alias somewhere else. Oh, right. And they had to kind of continue it and the kind of relationships they might have with other immortals, knowing that eventually they might have to kill each other or fight each other to the death. But they're still, it's like they're the only people that can understand each other because they're the only ones that have been alive for centuries. Oh. Um, that's actually, that's so, a really cool premise. Do they, yeah. do they, do they age? Do they get older? No, no. No, okay. They, they don't age. They, they, if they die, then they just come back. So like if, if you shoot one, they'll, they can die. Um, but then they'll just kind of wake back up again. Oh, I think, I think they age up to the point where they first die. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So so they they li- okay. they led their life as like a normal person and then they died and somehow they ended up kind of waking up as an immortal and they came back to life. So if they had any scars or something from before they died then they'd have those scars but otherwise they won't have new scars. Do they So it's kind of like that. Do they become immortal or are they just born immortal? I think they they're, were they born were meant immortal. to be immortal. Yeah. Oh. yeah. They, they're they're meant to be immortal, but they're not immortal until they die for the first time. So if they die for the first time when they're ninety, then you're gonna be ninety years old for all eternity. Would... If you die at the first time, like when you're an infant, you're gonna be an infant for <laughs> all time. You know, that's, that's that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, but I think it really dealt with a lot of kind of um complex stuff and just kind of in a cool genre way that was ahead of its time back when you know. 
genre stuff was mostly cheesy back and around when that series kind of started off. And I think they handled a lot better. I, I, I remember there being like a great quote in one episode about, you know, there being no black and white and there only being shades of gray. And that was one of the first times I'd ever kind of heard that concept phrased that way for me at least and i really related to it and i was kind of blown away and i remember there was a character named mythos in the series that was supposed to be like the oldest living immortal and yeah i just thought they they did him brilliantly he really felt like he was this ancient person that you know one of the best characters on the show oh yeah he was amazing because he he just he seemed so you know old and and weary and and you know but he wasn't, he was young looking, you know, but they really did a great job of kind of making this character that kind of, uh, he, he wasn't so morally tied down and stuff, you know, like he'd kind of lived his life, but he was it wasn't like he was evil either. He was just kind of, he kind of accepted things as the way they were. And it was, it was really interesting. Um, the character and his philosophy. I remember there was a great episode where there was a, a female immortal and she was kind of going after and, and all these immortals you have to understand they were like most of them were born probably in like the 14 1500s and stuff like that and so like the idea of like killing a woman killing a female for all these kind of like more honorable male people it's like very like they can't do it you know so even like the main character he couldn't do it even though he knew like this woman was basically going after all these people he couldn't do anything to stop her because he wasn't willing to kind of do that. And this character, this was like the really old immortal, he kind of showed up when she was like at like a weak point or something and, you know, just beat her, beat her and then went and he was about to kill her. And she's like, who are you? And he said, somebody born long before the age of chivalry <laughs> and then cut her head off, you know, <laughs> and it was fascinating because it's like, that's, you know, like, and when you see kind of more of his past, he was like around in like the like the Bronze Age or something, you know? So he was around and like when they were like ravaging tribes and stuff. And so he has no sense of obligation for something like chivalry, you know? It's very interesting the way they played that off. So um I would love to see that come back. I think it could benefit from, a, from you know, a modern kind of perspective. I think the whole idea of like um a character having to pick up their lives and move somewhere because they found out they were dead or something is much more interesting as our world becomes much more interconnected because that's got to be getting so much harder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, definitely. You know, for something like that to happen. Because a lot of these people, they'll be like a wealthy businessman or something and they'll carry on in like this other life. There's no way you could do that now, you know? Yeah, <laughs> like, there's, there's just... still remote countries with no internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's all sorts of like tricks with that. And they also did other stuff. I mean, this was pre Buffy, but like they actually had a council called the Watchers. Isn't there yeah, like is... all these internet memes that are like, oh, Justin Justin Timberlake was in the nineteenth century and like they show some old, like crappy <laughs> photo and it's like that would be that would be what they would do. Like you would just have to yeah. restyle yourself and then there'd there would be, be, uh, be all these photos. There's a Keanu Reeves one like that. that there's uh, a style looks Nicholas exactly Cage. like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, there's yeah, tons. I would think, I would think in the modern times, like the Council of the Watchers would actually be like a website or web forum where like they discuss <laughs> the immortals and post pictures of them and stuff. You know, uh, oh, for sure. So the Watchers in this show, they they kind of they they weren't like the Watchers and Buffy where they would actually kind of train, you know, a Slayer sign. They were like they just kind of basically observed and recorded history about these immortals and they, each one was assigned an immortal and they weren't, the immortals didn't even know they existed, you know? Yeah. And they kind of hid in the background. And so there's all these kind of interesting facets of the culture that comes from something like this happening that, that was really, you know, really would be interesting in a TV show, was interesting in a TV show. Of course, what happened and These the watchers sound was... like Reddit. <laughs> of course, what happened in the series was the Watcher assigned to the main character revealed himself to the main character, then started getting himself actively involved in that guy's adventures, and went, which wait. caused conflicts with the rest of the Watchers and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was a really it was a good show, and and I could totally see a lot of these concepts working. There are things that I don't think would work as well. Um, with the way it's TV is just more sophisticated now. So people ask questions on everything where they were more forgiving then, you know? So 
I think the kind of there can be only one thing is kind of a limitation as well. Like if I was to do the show, for example, I think I would kind of get rid of that. I would still leave the quote, but I would leave it as more of like a some fanatics that are immortals like use that <laughs> quote and, are, and believe in it, but not all of them do because in the show, like all of them right. say that. Make it, you make know? it, make it like, make it like a cult or like a religion. Like, maybe yeah. there's a sect of immortals that believes in that, and maybe the main character doesn't buy into that at all. And, the, mm-hmm. and then leave it as a question, you know, is it true or is it not true? You know, like, let the viewer come to a decision about that. Yeah. Maybe that Maybe that would work a lot better, be more interesting than just have it be, like, plain fact. So do any um, of you guys have any thoughts about this? I mean, you know... It, you guys don't know too much about from but from hearing me talk about it, like, would this be something that you would watch if this was a new show, like a reboot, starting from the beginning? It sounds I'm amazing. Sure I would give it a try. Yeah. yeah. See, I, I think this would be a good show on like, um, something like uh, uh, Cinemax. I don't know if you guys have seen like Cinemax's new run of shows that they've had, nope. like Banshee and strike back but they've been really kind of getting into these kind of like heightened action series that are kind of interesting and uh, banshee is a really good example of that that's like one of those shows it's kind of like spartacus in the sense that it's better than it has any right being i've used that quote <laughs> with, with Spartacus, <laughs> yeah. where like if you kind of just observe the like show that. quickly you'd be like this is crap but if you actually paid attention and watched it, you'd be like this is actually let's pretty get good. steve and sd knight to make the new highlander <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be, I think he might be a little bit busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. He might, yeah. I know. He's actually too Wilson. busy for Daredevil now. I know. Does that mean that? Does that mean that Wilson, Wilson Fisk had a quickening? Yeah. <laughs> That's what they called it when when they cut off someone's head. Though, when they cut off someone's head and gain their power, there'd be like lightning flying all around them, basically, and striking on them. Oh and yeah, it that was, was basically really the cool. visual representation of them gaining that power. If uh, you you know, if you do it, the quickening has to stay because that's just too cool. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that that would be the one that I think I would most like to see. So let's move on to something else. So Kat, um, is there anything that you would like to see come back? Well, you um, you'd actually mentioned this, and um, it is uh, Star Trek. Is I've I'm really unhappy with the, where the film franchise is right now, and I think mm-hmm. one of the important things in looking back at the previous films is. The two best Star Trek movies, at least in my opinion, are ones that are largely predicated on um, television episodes. Like, Star Trek is a show that in its ethos and its core belongs on, on television. Movies just aren't an adequate way of exploring it unless it's built on already established characters. And... and and then maybe finally the show can get back to what it's supposed to be as opposed to what J.J. Abrams turned it into. I would kill for another Star Trek, Star Trek TV series. So, so are you thinking like a, a, a new canon or like a continuation of kind of what was going on on TV before with, uh, uh, Next Generation and, um, Voyager and Deep Space Nine, that kind of stuff? That, a direct continuation of that or like, a completely new canon. After Star Trek 2009, I would have said, stick with the this new universe. After Star Trek Into Darkness, I'm like, let's go back to the old universe. Let's go back uh, to the I, prime universe. Let's, <laughs> let, I want the new show to be in canon with the end of Voyager, with, with you know, with that era of Trek. Um, so in that universe, not following this new uh, timeline here, because... I I actually I want to see Trek progress, you know, not regress, which is what happened with the movies. And they went back to the original crew. It was like, eh. who owns Paramount? Paramount now. Viacom, isn't it? Viacom owns it, so they own CBS as well, and uh, MTV and a bunch of like the kind of cable channels there. Yeah, I wouldn't Where... want it on CBS because CBS is basically <laughs> all they do these days are procedurals and four camera sitcoms and I, I honestly cannot for it's the life Star of me Trek, Los Angeles. ever remember <laughs> watching a show on CBS. It is the only major network that I've never watched a show 
on that network in my life, and I think that says something. they changed the name. Just to make ST. the just make the Star Trek <laughs> version of NCIS. Like, yeah, they, Star I was say that. officers investigating uh, <laughs> military crimes. <laughs> I was just going to say they'd rename it ST instead of Star Trek. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be ST colon, and then there'd be, like, three other letters, like, in random, you know, like. Yeah. Um, I I'd want even... it to be very much, like, a mixture of Deep Space Nine and the Next Generation. Like, kind of have the Next Generation where they're going to different places, they're having different dilemmas. We we'll also have like the serialized aspect of Deep Space Nice. Make it like very serialized, you know, with uh plots happening over the course of the season. Um, I think that would be really cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I, I actually completely agree with that. And I think given today's landscape in the way that I mean i I feel like everything genre is serialized and so and Star Trek would be so perfect for that, because DS nine is the best trek. And it was, and it would became more and more serialized. So I think that would be, I think that would be utterly fantastic. Definitely, there's there is a lot of outcry for Star Trek to come back to TV, um, and there has been for a while. And and it's like you said, it makes so much sense on TV, much more so than yeah. in movies, because that was always the big difference to me between, you know, like people always say, you can either like Trek or or Star Wars. It was one or the other. I I always <laughs> liked both. But the the big difference between them was that Star Wars was like an action movie. Star it was like Wars, an action quick thing. Whereas like Star Trek was always very heavy. Star heady. Wars was always like a big event blockbuster film franchise. It would be mm-hmm. we- really weird to have a Star Wars TV series with no movie franchise. Yeah. And that's what I... I think it would start to fall apart. I think because... it would. <laughs> I think it would. So it's like the opposite of this. It's like uh, Paramount, they want Star Trek to be a blockbuster film franchise. And Star Trek just isn't because, you know, two hour films like every other couple of years doesn't do justice to Trek at all. Star Trek is about complex, like ethical decisions and choices and and dealing kind of with the consequences of that and dealing with kind of the conflicts that arise between, you know, people with different cultures and stuff. Star Wars does have Clone Wars, which is actually a really good series. Yeah. But it's kind of like an offshoot thing. If they try to do the main storyline right. of, of Star Wars, I think it would fall apart because you'd start getting into... Because you can't get too <laughs> heady with Star Wars because they're trying to make it more of a... They're trying to keep it more of like an all-audiences kind of thing, yeah. whereas Trek is always geared more older. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. Star Wars was always like a science fiction fantasy, you know, it was based heavily off the archetypes of the heroic, the classic heroic tale, so you know. It was heavily, yeah. it was heavily based on, on the, um... On uh, Japanese samurai movies, like the Kurosawa films, like, um, uh, God, I can't even think of the name of the one, uh, uh, God. Also. There's a a few that have been directly referenced by Lucas. It was also heavily based off of, you know, 1950s science fiction serials like Flash Gordon and stuff like that. That was a huge influence for Star Wars. Or stuff like, uh, what's that one they just, they just did a re-movie for again that, um, John Carter, that used to be a serialized book series yep, or something. Yep. Uh, really, and the, the inspiration for Star Trek, you know, it came from, you know, the guy who made it, he was in the Navy, um, he was thinking about what that would be like in space, and, you know, and he also brought his ideas of, you know, his idealism about the ideal future and what that should be into, he injected that into Star Trek, and he made it more about the issues, social issues, political issues. He brought all that. And that's what makes Star Trek Star Trek. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's the it's the deeper, more troubling issues and the the kinda it, it's not so much about dramatic events as it is about, you know, how these things can be worked out, like the strategic kind of side of it. Right. It's about it's about moral complexities. You just can't explore that in depth. In, um, in a film series the way you can in a TV series. Yeah. Right, exactly. So I'd, I'd like to see that come back. Where would you think that would fit well on TV nowadays? Like, I think CW would skew too young. I know. Yeah. And uh, it's just kind of a shame because 
Um, in, in arguably, I think the network that's doing the best with genre television right now is the CW. Yeah. Um, it would have to be a, a few network years show. Ago, a few years ago, I would have said sci-fi, but they seem to have moved away from actually being a sci-fi network, and now they just make well. They're coming back to that. Actually, bad B movies. Well, they're it, actually coming back to that now. Okay, well, I mean, I would love to see someone who's like fully invested in legitimate science fiction. If sci-fi was willing to like regain its name, then I would love to see a network like that. Because I I worry it wouldn't uh it wouldn't do well on network television, and so I I think a cable channel a reinvigorated would be a better place. sci sci-fi channel more focused on what it's actually supposed to be about. That would be <laughs> well, they, the perfect flagship program for for a new sci fi channel. Right. Well there's right? Well, there's a lot of yes. there's a lot of like heavier sci fi stuff coming to the sci fi channel now with um or just sci fi as it's called, S Y F Y. I don't know you know I don't think do you you don't have sci fi in, in, in uh Canada, do you Lee? It's like you have it all air on other channels. Uh, I'm not sure I don't have cable, but I, I think that's true. The, the kind of, uh, popular thing about, uh, sci-fi, the sci-fi channel that you might not know, uh, being in Canada is that they used to be really focused on like stuff like they had Battlestar Galactica and Stargate and all these really kind of beloved franchises, um, that were like very science fiction. And then they started moving more and more into like, like ghost hunter reality shows and schlocky B films like Sharknado type stuff. And around that same time, they changed their name from sci-fi, like S C I F I <laughs> to sci-fi as an S Y F Y as, 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 as if that no longer stands for science fiction. It's just its own word. <laughs> And yeah. people kind of associate that name change with like what went wrong with the network, and <laughs> suddenly they were so, airing lots of wrestling, and then they started making intentionally terrible B movies like Sharknado. <laughs> I lost all respect. Yeah. For that. Sharknado, so well, bad. They, they always had they always had those B movies. So those B movies were always on Sci Fi because they had the Roger Corman theater stuff on Sci Fi all the time. So. That stuff's always been there. It just became a bigger, higher profile thing. It became what they advertised and what they talked about for their channel. But um, uh, I think I'm actually thinking more along the lines of where I think that would work would be on Amazon Prime. Oh. I think Amazon Prime will work because I think that you have the kind of the more techie kind of crowd kind of are into that, you know, so you get that kind of I think the the digital platform for a more Yahoo tech screen. audience. <laughs> no, <laughs> not unless Yahoo Screen fixes their interface. Yeah. No, I don't want anything. I've still only seen the first three episodes of of the Community season just because I can never get around to watching it because the interface is so bad. But oh man, I'd say I'd say something like Amazon Prime. I don't think Netflix would go for it, but that would be another example. Or even something like you know, if YouTube ever wanted to get full on into like real full-length content or something like that would be like an example i think that that kind of the audience goes with it if you go with like a more because the star trek audience is more of a tech audience and i think if you push that towards you know something that's more tech focused which are like the more the streaming platforms and stuff it might have a better chance there i, I don't know i i actually kind of want it to um be on a network or cable show just because i think that it's going to be more accessible to a wider audience and I still feel like there's a degree to which yeah, definitely. I think it, it, I think it would have a greater chance of drawing in slightly more casual viewers. Whereas if it's on something like Amazon Prime, then I think it's going to have a much smaller audience. I don't know. I think for me personally, I think that's just too far out there. Okay. I think if they did it, they might want to try to go for maybe a new network that's getting into, um, the format though, just because of, uh, um, you know, that they, so many networks have like a real established kind of brand of the kind of programming they have. I was thinking about that the other day that like Showtime used to have like Dexter, you know, and it used to have these other kind of weird, kind of interesting shows. Now it's mostly like these kind of real heavy kind of relationship focused shows where like I was thinking there's a lot of shows that I'd like that I was like, I would have thought before, like, oh, Showtime, that would be a good fit. Where now I don't think it would at all. I don't think it would work. 
Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, HBO has, like, a very, you know, even though it can vary from, you know, like, Game of Thrones to, like, Silicon Valley to, you know, Boardwalk Empire. So it can have such a huge variance as far as, like, the maybe the target demographic is. There is, like, a kind of overall tone that they have with their series. Um, I think that, you know, like we said with the CW, the CW skews a bit too young. I think if they did a CW Star Trek, it, everybody would be like in their early 20s. <laughs> well, <laughs> I to think, be I fair, think... it wouldn't be all that different from the J.J. Abrams Star Trek. Because everyone would be young and attractive and there would be a ton and ton of flash and and super Yeah, <laughs> But then that wouldn't solve your problem with it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I just I I'm thinking now I don't I don't know if I trust Fox for a big sci-fi thing anymore. UPN's long gone. Um, you know, it's like CBS is kind of too procedural. Um so I think like yeah, besides like sci-fi which is just starting to kind of get their groove back, there aren't many places that would be a good home for um, Star Trek now. I wonder if that isn't one thing holding it back, because I feel like fans have been asking for this ever since the series was rebooted in 2009. You know what would be interesting is um, history, the History Channel has been getting, I'm not saying to be on history, but the History Channel has been getting into um, original programmings with like uh, Vikings, which is uh, kind of became a big show for them. What if it was something like national geographic or something one of those kind of channels and they just went because that's kind of the audience you have the kind of audience that really kind of focuses on on sciences and kind of you know the people that would be interested in that and if they said we're going to do an original series but the only original series we're interested in doing is like star trek it would be very different because it wouldn't fit with the regular thing but i think it would match the audience at least a little bit sure and i think the network would love to have something the network like that would love to have something like that sure i could see that (laughs) <laughs> that's that's the tricky thing with Star Trek is just trying to find like where it fits now, you know? Yeah, definitely. I know. Yeah, I do think that's one of the things that's holding it back. But I feel like it's such a long run franchise that's been in enough forms that there's still got to be something new that could be done with it by someone, no one named J.J. Abrams, Robert Kirkman, or um, or or excuse me, Robert Orsai and or Alex Kurtzman. There are a lot of um, people that are really interested in doing, like, Star Trek. Some of them are too busy now. And I I don't think, like, the ones that I'm thinking of that have been more outspoken about it, I don't think I'd want them to be on it just because I'm more interested in what they're actually doing themselves right now. But, like, uh, Brian Fuller, for example, he was a writer on Voyager um, for a short period of time, I think, um, before he moved on to, like, Dead Like Me. Um... He's talked a few times about, you know, going, doing Star Trek on TV again and stuff and how, you know, what he would do and how he likes and stuff. And he's like a good pick for something like that. But he's got Hannibal right now, which I absolutely adore. I think it's one of the best shows on TV. I think last year it was the best show on TV last year. Um, and then you have, uh, uh, you know, American Gods, which he's also doing. Um, uh, HBO, which looks fascinating, you know, and Neil Gaiman's directly involved and they're collaborating on it. And it just seems like such a beautiful thing they're working on there that it's like, I wouldn't want him to get, you know, caught up in too many things, you know, but he's, he's just one of, of a few people that have been kind of talking about that. Cause there are a lot of showrunners that love Star Trek. Uh, yeah. There's gotta be someone out there with a good creative mind for it. Definitely. Um, yeah. I think I think Damon Lindelof has mentioned Star Trek. Please too, no, so. I'm sorry, not <laughs> Damon Lindelof. He was involved. I'm sorry, but Damon Spiritual Lindelof. Trap. He is of the same variety of J.J. Abrams. I'm I do do not like the way that man <laughs> operates. Hell no. <laughs> Give it to Joss Whedon. He needs a job. <laughs> no, I want Joss Whedon to start making his own stuff again. Yeah, yeah. me too. I'd love to see him do another show. So, um, Will, do you have any other kind of ideas? We, we pitched, when I was pitching the idea back and forth, I mentioned, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something like my pick of Highlander, but it could be like, you know, something like a new Star Trek series or a new Stargate series. I also mentioned, we just brought up Joss Whedon now. 
what about a return to something like Buffy and Angel, like a new series in the Buffalo, Buffy slash Angel like continuity in that, that time or in that universe? I would yeah. love that. You don't want that one? I actually don't. I think we spent our time in that universe. Um, really, I think what we got is good. I don't know. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not quite sold on it yet. As is there anything that you would shows. like to see? Um, let re let's reboot the Incredible Hulk for TV. <laughs> um, no, it could it could it could continue from the end of the Avengers with uh, Mark Ruffalo waking up somewhere in Middle America, not fully knowing who he is, and then he just wanders America like helping people in need and turning into the Hulk. With Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with Lou Ferrigno. It's, it's going to be the CG still. And we can get William Hurt back as uh, General Thunderbolt Ross. <laughs> See, I like, I, I kind of like where the Hulk is right now as a Marvel property, because I don't think it works so much in, in its own movies. Right. But I think it works really well in the Avengers, and I'd like to see it kind of become an element of other Marvel stuff besides the Avengers. Like, I, I think somebody mentioned um, one time they were talking about Mark Ruffalo was, like, being interviewed by somebody, and they said, well, we, they were trying to hint at, like, Planet Hulk, and they're like, will we ever see him go into space? And he's like, oh, I think he'll definitely go into space. Oh, and yeah. um, I think, like, what if he was in, like, Guardians of the Galaxy or something, That's, you know? That would be, like, really cool, I think. Yeah, it's something like that. That's where I could kind of see the... I could see the Hulk working more like that, as, like, you know, a part of all of these other things rather than as in his own focus, just because I don't think it works as its own movie. I think the TV series, the, the tricky thing is that would be so expensive <laughs> to pull off. Oh yeah, definitely. I just don't know, man. But <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it would be we'll, tricky. To we'll get into off. MCU talk tomorrow, though. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I kind of, um, yeah, I kind, I kind of can't like really think of anything to be honest. Um, <laughs> the, N- the MCU talk kind of inspired that. I was like, hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um. Lee, is there anything that you that you'd love that's gone now that you'd love to see come back in some way, like either as a um, new series, a reboot, a continuation, or just picked up as if it never went away? <laughs> I would love to see Lie to Me uh, come back. Um, I I always I love that show and I always miss it. Uh, there's there's a lot of shows that that you could take, and just like the 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 changes in technology would just be really interesting and really funny to see. Like, if you took Friends and had them, like, do an episode dealing with, like, Tinder and Snapchat and, like, just, like, various um, apps and just Google Glass, like, something crazy like that. I think that would be a cool <laughs> episode. If you could just bring them back, to like, for one episode and just update them, uh, that'd be really cool. Have you ever have you ever seen the Modern Seinfeld Twitter account? No. I think it's I think thing? it's called Modern Seinfeld. Yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a Twitter account. I think it's called Modern Seinfeld and basically they just the person tweets out like a scenario for like a Modern Seinfeld episode. <laughs> and he'll just tweet out a bunch of and they're really funny cuz it is like that. It's like, you know, Jerry gets involved on Tinder and blah blah, you know. <laughs> like it'll be like you're reading the description on like a TV guide or something. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Uh, for the episodes. It's really funny. Cause it's like, it's, you can really picture it in your head. You're like, Oh yeah, that would so happen. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to see, um, Misfits come back. Uh, I miss that show so much. Uh, I would love to see. How, how would you like to see that come back? Would you like to see it come back as like a, a remake or a direct continuation? Maybe something following Nathan in Las Vegas or something or <laughs> There's a there's a mini movie following him uh where he ends up in jail. <laughs> um I would love to see either a new cast or the first cast. I I don't I don't mm-hmm. really like I'm so invested in the first cast that I I just want to see any any part of the, like any part of their story. Um uh, but I think a new cast would be really cool just like new powers, new like if someone could you know have the superpower that like Everybody has to swipe right on their Tinder profile. Like that'd be that'd be just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, okay. mis- so misfits. Um, but, oh yeah. Uh, just new a new cast, new powers. I would love to see that. That would be so cool. Um, 
like different ages too. Like I love seeing um like the older characters and um how they how they handle their powers, things like that. Uh yeah. So maybe take maybe take misfits outside of the juvenile Yeah, like I <laughs> uh, I would love to see them offenders. Like you know, if there were moms and dads <laughs> and they had to deal with their like their their crazy superpower lives and killing and murder and protecting their kids. Like I think that would be really cool and like dealing with a mortgage, like Nathan dealing with a mortgage. The extended misfits universe. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> so yeah, that that I'm I'm a a big fan of misfits and one of the things I really like about that show is how it can take an ability that just seems kind of stupid and then make it kind of sinister or very useful in a, in a way you wouldn't expect. Um, just any any it, of, the, of the powers are just so, like, such an interesting literal take on, on like, a power that you've never, you like, that's not a power. <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it's very anime-esque in that um, a lot of anime will have, like, these very specific powers that, like, you wouldn't see in, like, a Western thing. In a Western thing, it's like, Oh, you can use like fire magic or something. And like an anime, it's like, I can chant this long incantation and shoot a fire that's shaped like a dragon and it soars through the sky. And you know, it's very specific in that way. And, and even though Misfits isn't like that necessarily, it's, it's like it in the sense that you'll have these just kind of powers that just, they don't seem like it would be, you know, uh, how do I explain this? Um, Normally, like when you watch like a superhero thing or something, they try to explain the powers in this very logical way. Like, oh, you know, by heightened, you know, senses, they're able to do this. It's like that, that can't happen with misfits. You know, <laughs> you don't get like, he can take somebody else's powers away by fucking them. Let's... Doesn't come. <laughs> it's so over the top, but it's so believable. Like, it's so like, you're like, this would never work on any other show. You're like, this is so stupid and so ridiculous. You're like, but it's so believable. Just, like, I uh, love it. it. Within its own... Within the um, universe, yeah. Like, it makes yeah, so much sense. Yeah, within its own universe, it works. Yeah. yeah. I would love to see, like, Superman come back as well. Like, I thought the... Uh, was it the, the 2000s or 1998? I don't know. But, like, the old the old Superman show, I thought was really good. And I would love to see well, it come back. Well, they're doing Which Supergirl. Lewis, so... You mean Lois and Clark? Yeah, or? yeah the... Lo- the the show that was on. Lewis, Lewis. Yeah. The show that was on. I don't know. <laughs> Are you talking about like reboot Smallville? No, um, not Smallville. The uh, the one with the Ripley host. Prob- yeah. Okay. So you're talking about Lois and Clark. Lois and Clark. Yeah. 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 yeah yes. For for sure. There we go. Uh, I mean, well, there may be a Supergirl show that's close enough, right? <laughs> Is Superman uh, in it? Uh, I don't know. Like, I think they're referencing. Him I think in they're it, referencing I don't, him. In it. I don't know if they're actually gonna have him in it because I'd actually be shocked if Superman showed up because they're playing like Warner Brothers DC are playing these this game with their properties, which is like it's so stupid. Batman is not allowed to show up in like a TV show ever, apparently, um, unless he's a kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And and only if the show is horrible. And only if the show is horrible. <laughs> Poor Gotham. It tried. Yeah. It failed. <laughs> and and I think they're doing like I think they got the same thing going with Superman. It's like I don't know, because they had Smallville for like a long time and they had even when Smallville was a thing, when they had teenage Clark Kent running around on T V, they still had like this weird thing about Batman being in it, where they wouldn't let them put Batman in it, and it was like, yeah, I saw so it, and that's when they they brought in they brought in a uh, Green Arrow on Smallvale, yeah, as as a that. substitute for um for Batman, and then they did the same thing when they started Arrow. They basically did Arrow like it was Batman, <laughs> yep, because they couldn't get the right they couldn't they weren't allowed to you do Batman, yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, you know were... what? I'm okay with that though because. Um, one of the things that I've appreciated about Arrow is that it's made me realize how tired I am of Superman and Batman. Like, one of the things <laughs> I love about Arrow is that it's going really deep into the DC universe and educating me about all these characters that I didn't know about, and it's a ton of fun. Whereas Superman and Batman have both kind of been done to death. Right. <laughs> I mean, and, and Green Arrow as a character, was originally c- conceived completely and shamelessly as a Batman ripoff. Um, so, <laughs> but... But I think I think what Lee was talking about was is kind of the idea of a show like Superman in that it's, um, with Lois and Clark, 
in that it's like a fully matured Superman. Right. It's not. It's not. Like... It's not Superman as a teenager going through angsty drama. <laughs> it's like Superman as Superman. I never right. liked Smallville for that reason. I was just like. Like, this isn't Superman. He's not a whiny teenager. Like, give me real Superman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so even, even outside of Superman, just the idea of a, you know, TV show following a superhero who is an older superhero, you know, I mean, I guess the closest we have to that is like Daredevil. Yeah. Right now. Right now. You know? Yeah. I mean, I, who knows if they're ever going to do another TV show about Superman. I don't think, like I said, for the same reason, I don't think they're interested in that. They'd rather have Superman be, like, their film franchise than, than like, make it, you know, I would be a TV really show. I would be really interested in seeing, like, a live-action Spider-Man TV show. I would be, you yes. know what, that's a good idea. Yes. That's huh. definitely... Um, I, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Yes. I think that that was... Um, I mentioned that when we did the impressions of The Flash and that the first episode of The Flash, the pilot, felt like it was borrowing a lot from Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. I would um, love that if they did it, like... If they did it right, yeah. yeah. if they did it right, have it, have it on Netflix. You know, they could actually have... And the good thing about Spider-Man is they could actually... Spider-Man's in that neighborhood. Like, they could have Spider-Man interact with Daredevil. That's they could true. have Spider-Man... You know, and the Punisher, who we we're, we have to have show up. <laughs> yeah. well, the Punisher, uh, Punisher actually debuted in an issue of Amazing Spider-Man, if I recall correctly. So yeah, um, we know that's just a matter of time on on uh, on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, but who knows now? Because you know who's expressed interest in um, Punisher is uh, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy. Now, well, so- Tom Hardy made like some weird statement where. Like, it, it was a b- bizarre statement because he said, he, he said, I want to play Punisher. And then he said, I want to play somebody else from like some video game and then, or something or whatever, just whatever. And I'm like, yeah. okay, what do you mean, whatever? <laughs> what, I, what I'm hoping is that his interest originally in like Punisher doesn't cause like, you know, Marvel to go, maybe we should do this as a movie, because I don't think they should. I think they should do it as a TV show on Netflix. They definitely should do it as a TV show. I agree. The Punisher needs to be on Netflix, um, especially seeing as you can't, you just couldn't do that show on ABC. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, well, Hannibal's on NBC, so. Uh, yeah, Han- yeah, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> shocked. NBC lets them get away with like that stuff, but yeah, probably that's one of the gets, darkest shows on TV. Probably because so. it gets them critical acclaim. <laughs> yeah, probably, yeah. That the one I'm I'm anticipating is um is the idea of this uh, X Men series that's rumored. From what I'm told, now uh, this is just something a friend told me. So like this obviously isn't a legit source, but from what I'm told, talks between Marvel and Fox went really well. And but they haven't announced anything yet because they don't want to rush into it. They want to take their time and make something good. Well, that's so good. I, yeah. I'm really curious to see what they'll do because it'd be fun to see them do something live action. But I think it would be even more expensive and harder than the Flash. And that, yeah, because, definitely. I mean, it's, it isn't just one character that has superhuman abilities. It's probably going to be like a whole. <laughs> yeah, all of them. Big I, think, of I think. Them. I think if we, they do an X Men show. They should do like something like something similar to first class, but not like not like with the era setting, but more like focused on students at the Xavier School. You know, see, I don't, I don't think they would do X Men. I think it's being called X Men for lack of a better term. Right. I think no. they're gonna do a mutant show. Oh well, yeah, I don't think, I don't think it should I think be, it'd be centered closer around to something like X Force or X Factor or something like that. I don't think it, it should be, be more centered. like the B Team. Yeah, I don't think it should be yeah. centered around the core X Men from the films. Yeah, I that think, would, yeah, that would be a problem. That would be. A problem. I don't think they'd do that. I, th- I, th- I don't th- think they. I think if they made it like kind of like. I mean, it, this does sound kind of stupid, but maybe if they centered it around students in the school and kind of they could, like, make a more interesting drama out of it. My my biggest question is, is um, are they going to try to tie it into the cinematic universe? Ooh, you know, that's a big question. And if they aren't, 
are they are we going to be seeing the same characters over again? For instance, if it's going to be set at the Xavier Institute, are we going to have a whole new version of Professor X? That might be kind of weird. So Well, I'm I'm wondering that in general with, with Fox with these properties, because they own more than just X Men, even just in the movie side, because they own the Fantastic Four. And they have the new version of that you know coming what? out, I... and they and they also own um oh, what's it called uh um Deadpool, and that's coming yeah. out. Yeah, Deadpool. And are those going to be the same universe as X Men, or are they going to be yeah. standalone? Yeah, we don't. Well, uh, Fantastic Four looks like it's completely standalone. I have heard or seen nothing to suggest that Fantastic Four has anything to do with uh, X Men. It does, and it doesn't need to. And it doesn't need to. It doesn't need... So it it doesn't seem like Fox is pursuing this idea of a cinematic universe. But yeah, but then you have Deadpool, which is kind but, of more closely well, linked to X-Men. I saw well, yeah. an interview with Simon Kinberg where he said that all three of uh, next year's films, Deadpool, Gambit, and Apocalypse, will be ma- making reference to one another. So, okay. so that is... Deadpool, that they will yeah, be. Deadpool is very much an X Men character. He's very part, much part of the X Men universe. So to have the Deadpool movie have nothing to do with X Men would be kind of weird. Um, so now we're talking about Marvel movies again. <laughs> <laughs> but not the MCU. See, this is the slippery slope. <laughs> we're not talking about the MCU. We're not talking about the MCU <laughs> this time. No. <laughs> Who owns uh, Watchmen? I think that would Watchmen be a cool show. was DC. DC? Okay. Yeah. That would be a really DC, interesting I, show. I always, I always thought that would make a better show than a movie just because um, if if you've read the graphic novel for Watchmen, there's so much like character profiling and stuff that just would work so much better as a show than, than as a movie. And, and the way the chapters are set up feel very much like episodes in the graphic novel. Like there's one where that's following Dr. Manhattan and you're kind of seeing the way he perceives time as being like so disjointed and stuff. It would work so perfectly as like a standalone episode um, that kind of just ties in, are you get, getting you a bit to know who Doctor Manhattan is, kind of thing. And there's, you know, like there's another episode where like the whole thing or a chapter where the whole thing is like uh, Rorschach like talking to a therapist about his kind of past and his background. It's like that would be such a good framing device for an episode. Right, that sounds that's really it, cool. If I read it, I think like a limited run series, like maybe like a a 10 episode TV series or something just straight out and that's it. No second season. I think it would work perfect. Uh, that would, yeah. yeah, that would probably be perfect. Yeah. As much as I did end up liking the movie, I think that oh, the movie's good. Oh, it's, just, it's just that there's, there's a lot they can't do because of the amount of material. Oh yeah. Yeah. They, it, Watchmen was one of those things that for a long time was considered unfilmable. It was one yeah. of the unfilmable things. Before, yeah, Watchmen, Game of Thrones, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the one, the Stephen King one? I'm the Dark think Tower. Of Dark Tower. Those are like the unfilmable three. And I Narnia. <laughs> Slaughterhouse Five, I think, was also considered unfilmable. There's, there's a few kind of books and stuff that have been had that consideration, but that's all starting to change. The the writer of Narnia was was ad ad like like he didn't want his books to be made into a book like a show or a movie because he knew that it wouldn't be as good um he was adamant mm-hmm. about that yeah he was worried about um he was very animals. worried yeah but that and then that was that was long before he didn't see the era of um cg oh, yeah. so yeah he didn't so yeah see. it changes i mean lord of the rings that wouldn't have worked 20 years ago oh 20 definitely to 30 years not. ago that was another lord, one of the unfilmables yeah that was one of the unfilmables lord of the rings really was one of the things I think really benefited from modern filmmaking technology. They couldn't have done it and have it be legitimate before without the cur- the technology that we have now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. Sorry, I'm like falling asleep as I'm sitting here, so I really think I need to take off. All right. Well, it's a good Later, ending cat. point. So, <laughs> so I'll just end it here. So, uh, thank you everybody for listening to the TV Enthusiast Podcast, the weekly set. Uh, that's it for tonight. I'll put, uh, any plugs or something in the article anyway, so we'll leave them out of the actual podcast. Uh, 
Thank you, everybody, for listening. Good night. Good night. night. Bye. Bye. If you would like to voice your opinion, send an email to theweeklyset at tventhusiast.com. TV Enthusiast is a part of the Enthusiast Media Network. Stay tuned to TV Enthusiast and the Weekly Set Podcast for more coverage of all of your favorite shows. Devolve 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 your favorite shows.